Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about some C-sharp strategies and the most important interview questions. See here, we already have the finalist method which reclaims the memory using the garbage collector. The main purpose of finalist method is it reclaims the memory which was in garbage collector. Here, this is automatic process. When, then why do we have the dispose method? Is this method different from finalize? What is the interface from which the dispose method inherited? So here we have three questions, but it's combination of one question. when we see the question what is the interface from dispose method in the data question one the question two is why we need dispose and finalize what is the purpose so here yes we have the finalist method which is used to return the memory for the unused object but the thing is the finalized method is sufficient to release the memory from the key for the unreferenced object but it's only for the managed object yes right so finalist method can reclaim the managed object memory from the key which are not used since longer time yeah, this is the main purpose for finalist method since it is not used longer time then whatever the object which are unmanaged the object which are out of gotten CLR the object where the CLR can't use to manage dispose method is the dispose method is used for all those objects which do not come under CLR or under the managed this is the differentiate between finalize and dispose. Dispose method it will be used for all objects. It does not come under CLR, but finalize it will come under the CLR. And one more thing, dispose method can be overwritten, it can be written to reclaim the object of those classes. And one more thing is dispose method by high disposable interface. It is implemented by high disposable interface. So we got the answer for the question which what is the interface from which the dispose method emulator? Dispose emulator in high disposable interface. And what is the main differential between Finalize and dispose is dispose not come under CLR. Finalize will come under CLR, which is no longer used objects in garbage collector. So, so this is the one how we can implement dispose method. Okay, let's move to next question. Can we suppress the garbage collector? See, the thing is, the suppress finally says in garbage collector. The main purpose of suppress is. Sometimes the garbage collector which we use dc.collect will not collect all the objects. So I want to or else it has to take some time. Suppose my object has to clear level 5 to 10 minutes because running several times 
my application is running 7 times. But GC dot collect will not collect or will not force to collect but GC dot separate final method will collect and force memory immediately. So this is the main difference between GC dot collect and GC dot suppress file. Okay. Here the question is CPS. Why do we need suppress? As it is used to retain the unused memory, which improve the performance of our application. So yes, we can suppress the garbage collector. There is a stack method. Okay. In GC class called suppress finalize. Yes, GC class suppress finalize. Other thing, the stack method <coughs> takes a parameter. For the object, so we can pass it to the suppress with the timing memory for that. Now the question comes: Why do we need suppress? As we used to return the unused memory. So whenever we are using dispose method for class object, which is capable of disposing the object, and in that case we don't need to use this method to attempt to reclaim the memory. Yes, right. So how to? Implement the ID provable into the suppress finalize here. We are creating a class, base class, and uh, the class which I will use the direct class ID is possible. So I, I create the force and the DC dot suppress finalize. Okay, let's move to the third one. <coughs> so, not third one, second one, as you guys have seen in the book. The demo class is inherited by the, the demo class inherited by I dispose method, right? and this will have the dispose method to implement. Hence, hence, after implementation of dispose method, we need to reclaim the memory using the garbage collector. So we can use the separate file for the current class as well. So in C sharp, it is very very important for garbage collector and suppress and dispose. This type of methods are very important in C sharp. You have to make sure proper details in garbage collector ok let's go to third question in garbage collection how the object generation come into the picture see uh, the thing is inside the how the garbage collector will work so I will show you suppose I am having a This is my garbage collector. Inside this garbage, we have multiple GC1, GC, okay, and uh, second one is GC2, means GC2. GC1, GC2, maybe I will create one more GC3. So, inside the garbage collection, we have many cells that is object generation. Okay, this is GC3. So, how many generation on object I have? And please tell me the process of this book. Objects based on the generation. Every generation is the cell, cell by cell. Can, can an object move from one generation to 
one generation to another generation. This you want to this you too. If yes, then why? But the need to have different generation as we are going to dispose of them, which are marked by the garbage collector. See, the thing is, it's all about it, the entire thing is garbage, garbage collector. But why we are splitting into GC1, GC2, GC3? Everything going to dispose about uh, everything going to discuss or dispose. Why we are splitting into the different generation? The thing is, every generation, not about it, all about theoretically and practically. Every generation, suppose GC1, maybe if you see GC1. Maybe it will it will take only two MB, but GC two four MB or five MB, but GC three it will take only three MB. So based on the file size and based on the organization of collection, it is going to different files to collect and dispose the objects. So that is it. Based on the allocation. Based on the memory, based on the considerations, it will go to different generation cells. So this is the answer for that. You can see. Let's start with the water garbage collection first, and then we will come to our main question. Today. As you know, that all the objects created using the new operate gets fit to the key memory. So everything is in key memory. So whenever a new object gets created, it tries to put in the key memory. Yes. For a time. New object will create. Now let's say there is no place to keep another newly created object. Yes, right. Another newly created object. In the garbage collector installed, it is the background process and through CLR take the unused object memory. So it mainly clean up or keep memory and new object get placed. And one more thing is, whenever the new object is created, it will be keep. Placed into the previous object. So this is the main purpose uh, for the object and the collector and so on. Yeah. Let's go to one more question. How the encapsulation is different from abstraction? I think both are used to write the unnecessary details. Then. How they are different? So the thing is, so yes, both encapsulation and abstraction do the same thing, but it has two different. Yes, encapsulation is different and abstraction is different. Encapsulation it encapsulates the object, so it hides the detail. So encapsulation is Hiding plus binding the data. So how encapsulate hide the data? Suppose we have entire application called business object. Okay, this layer contains all the entities with all the properties. Take an entity name employee. This employee will have class name. This is the employee view of this, and it contains public uh, properties like employee ID, employee name, etc. So this is the person is on property level to set the class. Now whatever we want to output, we just need to create the object of the class and set the value of the employee. So here you can see now the first thing where it setting are getting value. Employee is a public property. Here employee is a public property and employee view class contains no values. Only employee ID contains value, which is private. So it is not private is not accessible. So binding the data happens to the employee ID through. So employee ID through employee ID, it is private. So the data is access to public property, and the actual data is private variable. So this binding and ID using encapsulation. So this is the main thing. So we can discuss more about this encapsulation abstraction in our next video. Thanks everyone.